Hi, I'm Rob Shatterly, and for the last 22 years, I've been painting a series of portraits I call Americans Who Tell the Truth. Until I started uh, painting these portraits, I had never painted a portrait. I'm a self-taught artist, so I felt comfortable teaching myself how to do it, and I've developed a particular manner of painting that I, well, it works for me, that's all I can say, and it, uh, it seems to be able to do what I want to do with a portrait, is, is get at the essence of somebody's character. All of the arts require us to look deeply at something, listen deeply, see deeply, feel deeply. I mean, I do that in order to understand better the lives and the courage and the uh, persistence of the people I paint so that I can introduce them to other people and tell their stories to try to inspire people to be better citizens. And what we're going to be doing is a little workshop that requires you to you know, do that kind of uh, artistic work, to find in yourself something you deeply care about, something that you maybe haven't expressed clearly to other people, maybe even to yourself. And what you're going to be doing is, is first thinking about those issues that are, are most important to you. Write some things down about what you care about most, perhaps maybe what you're most angry about, what you're saddest about. And then we'll make images of ourselves. This isn't going to require that you all be Rembrandt. Uh, it only requires that you have some idea of, even if it's rather crude, about what you look like. Not everybody has to be able to put all their features exactly right or anything else. That isn't the, the, the concern here. The concern is that you represent yourself in a way that feels okay to you. And then you attach your words, your sentiments, your concerns to that picture and then talk to other people in your class about who you are in relationship to the things that you care about most at this time. And I usually find that when we do that, when we first make that effort to understand what we care about and then represent who we are and attach those ideas to that image and then share them with other people, it enables a kind of a, a, a level of discussion that we often don't have with each other and then it often also encourages a level of commitment to doing something about those things that we might not have if we didn't talk about them publicly. It maybe sound kind of intimidating, it's not. It's really kind of fun. I mean, it does challenge you to, to think clearly and care deeply, but it also challenges you to have a good time while you find out more about who you are and then who you are in relationship to your classmates, to your community, and to the world. You're all, you know, young people, you're still forming ideas about who you are, you're experimenting with the things in your life, you're beginning to get to know yourself in relationship to other people, you're learning your own talents and skills, you're learning your passions, and probably even though not everybody and maybe not even your own parents takes you entirely seriously all the time, what you want, what I want you to do right now is, is take yourself seriously to be thinking about, you know, who am I? How do I want to live in the world? And, and then look into your own eyes and, and your own face and look to see the character that is forming there. Often a young person's adherence to an, an ideal, to something they care about, to some, to some issue, to some other person, to some other animal, to some tree, you know, is as fierce and important and admirable as anything any adult could feel. And it's when you feel like that, it's also important to be able to uh, articulate it, to express it, to show it. And I want you to be looking at yourself to try to find that level of important caring in yourselves as anybody in the world. As kids, you often get dismissed as, you know, kids, you know, people who are not fully members, you know, of a community or society because they're kids. Not true. You know, everything that you think and feel at this moment may be just as important and as clear and uh, as impassioned as anything that adults make, do and think and feel. And many of the, the problems that are in the world are not because of things that kids felt 
and because of kids' immaturity about issues. It's because mistakes made by adults who allowed their judgment to be misdirected because of interests that were not really for the good of everybody. And I want you kids to be thinking that often you may be the great source of good feeling, of right feeling, of caring, of passion. And I want you to look for that in yourselves. But also I want you to you know, have fun representing yourself. I mean, not everybody you know, here knows how to, how to paint a portrait, but you know that you've got eyes and nose and a mouth and ears, and you can you know, represent yourself in some way and, uh, and portray it, and then we'll talk about it. Painting these, these self-portraits, sometimes uh, we're in a, a situation where our kids have access to mirrors, and so they, not always, and so they can look at themselves in, in a mirror and you know, look at their own features. I mean, it's, it's an interesting thing that, you know, you, by the time you're you know, 12 or 13 years old, think of the thousands and thousands and thousands of times, maybe even hundreds of thousands of times, you've actually looked at your own face. But if somebody says to you, draw your eye, draw the shape of your eye, draw the shape of your nose, how do your lips look at the corner where they meet? You know, what they do, how do they fit into your cheek? You know, how much distance is there from your lower lip to the beginning of your chin? Most of us, even though we've looked like that at ourselves so many thousands of times, you don't have a clue of how you would actually represent that. And so one of the things that we want you to do is, actually, if we have access to mirrors to do our self-portrait, is to look at those things, to actually see, well, what is the shape of my eye? And why is it different than the shape of somebody else's eye? And what is the structure of my nose? Sometimes we do these, these workshops and we don't have any mirrors, we don't have anything. And, but we do have, I mean, everybody has some sense of, you know, kind of what they look like. And so we draw kind of what we look like. I mean, we know we've got these features, we know we've got hair of a certain length and it's a certain color and we can do all that. And sometimes it's better just to, you know, make the crudest representation and not try to be fully accurate at all, just something that resembles who you are. So first I just take a pencil and draw the portrait until I'm pretty comfortable that I've got a, a good enough likeness to begin to work from. It doesn't have to be perfect. I know that in the process then of as I go along painting, I can correct things that I didn't see before. That can usually be fixed you know, while I'm painting and I count on that. I, but I, what I do is I try to get a, a good enough drawing that I'm satisfied that basically the skeleton is good enough to start adding the flesh. And then the reason this is kind of this terracotta reddish color is the first thing I do after the drawing is just take a big brush and paint this reddish color over the whole thing. And I choose to use red because underneath our skin, everybody here has the same color blood. And that blood that's under your skin affects the tones of the, the surface of your skin. When I start a portrait like this, what I do is I draw one eye. I draw the right eye. And the reason I draw that eye first is because I'm right-handed. And once I've drawn that eye, I can move over here without dragging my hand into my own drawing and draw the next eye. If I were to draw this eye first, I would have my hand on the, the first one and smearing it while I'm drawing the next one. And so I keep working like that, drawing the eyes, getting the distance right, then use them uh, as a guide of proportion to how long the nose is and where to, where to put the nose and the wings of the nose. If you could see underneath even this little sketch here and the paint that's on top, you would see that I've got all kinds of lines drawn underneath to make sure that the different places in it are lined up as they, are, as they really are. You know, where is this corner of the mouth? And it's often lined up with the iris or, or with the pupil on the other in the eye. And the wing of the nose is often lined up with the corner of the eye. The distance between, you know, from one eye to another is usually approximately the length of an eye. So once I've drawn this eye, I know that this eye is going to be about the same length as this eye from this eye. So this distance is about the same as this distance. 
that line between the eyes is right about in the middle of the face. And so th this distance from between the eyes to the chin is about the same distance as the line between the eyes and the top of the head. And so it looks shorter because of the hairline and this and that, but it's not. This is this distance is the same as that distance. And if you miss that, the sense of the face and the proportion of the head is going to look off. You got to paint what you see, not what you think often. When we make art, you know, we often think that we're making something that is special and permanent and you know, carry, will carry a meaning for you know, five years, 500 years. We don't have to think about it that way at all. You know, the vast majority of art making disappears pretty quickly. And sometimes that's just fine. It doesn't need to exist longer than that. You know, we don't have to worry about what somebody's going to think of this art we're making here in this classroom you know, 20 years from now, or even, you know, two years from now. We want to think about well, what feels like an honest expression right now. And if, if we can make that, one, it may persist or it may not, but, but also we want to make something that expresses how we really feel, how we, you know, want other people to see us feeling. We have to open ourselves up to being vulnerable to say, this is really me. You know, we take off the mask when we make art and show something real. You know, we may want to do it in this class and, you know, 20 minutes later, we may want to crumple it up and throw it away. That's okay. Uh, and maybe that means that you'll throw it away because you know you can do something better, different next time. That's okay. You know, part of the process here is to be part of the process is to make something, to have fun making it, to explore making it, to find out something about ourselves while we do it, and then find out our own standards. You know, does this represent how I really want to be able to make art? Maybe it's just the little first stepping stone to something much different, and your, your critical ability may be way beyond your physical ability to actually make a, a drawing or a painting. That's fine. Let's just, at this moment, we're just experimenting. We're trying to, see how to make an expression uh, of both uh, an idea and uh, a face that tells you something about it.